good evening, everyone. Let's start off by asking you guys a riddle. Who has two thumbs and feels 180 years old today? This guy. That's right. Uh, welcome to the CSC Challenger Series Division 1 brought to you by Partners Promoting Darts. I'm Sean Green, and if you want to know how stressful this job is, that's Will Stewart. No, I'm kidding. I'm joined by the great Ryan Mooneyham here in the <laughs> broadcast booth tonight. And, of course, the wonderful Nick Deschera. Uh Guys, we have ourselves a battle this evening. Sugar Shane Johnson taking on Ram Gravera. Ryan, what do you know about these two gentlemen? And welcome. Well, thank you so much. I uh, played a league match at 6.30 so I could be here in time to be on the... Uh the mic the uh, i've played ram before i've talked to ram quite a few times either vegas um uh oklahoma stuff like that now i've been down in texas a few times um i not played sugar shane very much i know he what his capabilities are four seven four eight four nine on a on a on a slow night five plus on a good night same yep. thing for ram so these two i think these two match up very very well and it's going to come it's going to be a doozy yeah i agree with that nick you have some stats for us here we got a wisconsin night for the first time it's week four but that's okay might as well be better late than never i guess for a wisconsin night sugar shane johnson what do you got well sugar shane johnson of course notoriously i proclaimed to the world during our selection show i said this is the year of sugar shane and then he proceeds to lose in the second round. But what well, I am excited to see him on the stream. He has talked about it himself, saying he's been struggling. He was one of the 5 0 averages heading into this season. And while he's been struggling, he did beat some good names along the way, uh, including uh, uh, Tyler Hensey, was one of the notable ones there. Uh, what, what I expect to see out of him tonight is uh, taking his time and regaining form. But of course, uh, he's playing Ram Guevara. Ram Guevara played him first round of the CSI in Kansas City back in October and beat him. Now, it was shorter format, but they both acknowledged that they have to be on each other's toes. They went all the way to a tiebreaker there, and I don't expect much to change tonight because Ram seems to be on form while uh, Sugar Shane is kind of working on that confidence. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you there. I think that seeing Sugar this weekend, this past weekend at the Booyah Cup, uh, it was good to see him kind of in a little bit of a better form. I think then we have seen him so far in the CSE Challenge Series, averaging, like you said, above a 5, but in this CSE is a 4.78, and Rams down to a 4.72. So they are .06 away from each other here in the CSC <laughs> Challenge Series through about 45 games. So this is anyone's ball game, Ryan? I personally watched that match between Ram and uh, Sugar Shane at the CSI. While I was getting my butt smacked, Two boards down. I watched their match go to the tiebreaker, and uh, yeah, it's that was anybody. It's that's anybody's anybody's game tonight's going to be anybody's game. This is going to be down to that seven mark come later. That lucky bull shot came late. It, it's going to be four seven four seven four eight four eight five two five two together together together. It's just going to be like that all night. Well, that's all we can hope for here, right? Is uh, that type of matchup. I, I got to be honest with you guys. This is the first night I have taken a nap for like two and a half hours after I got home from school today. Um, but uh, man, who thought the time change was going to be this devastating? I don't know. <laughs> who thought well, so? It, but it, it didn't. It didn't hurt that uh, you you sat there and called uh, some dynamic, stressful, tense matches either. And well, to, make it, to make a note on that, Sugar Shane was at the Booyah Cup this way this weekend. Ram was over at the Oklahoma Throwdown, so yep. they both got a lot of tournament underneath them this weekend to be preparing for tonight's match. Yeah, I'm excited for it. It's going to be a great time. There is Ram Gravera wearing his signature backwards hat. Is he throwing on the right board? Yes, he is, and they're getting going with the crick up, or cricket count up, or the cricket count up. My goodness, what am I doing today, guys? Someone help me. Save me. If you've never watched before, let's go over the format and specific rules of the CSE Challenger Series. It is a double elimination style turn tournament. Players play a race to nine, best of 17 legs, all cricket with a cork, which is what we're seeing here. Three dart count up to start the match. The loser of the previous leg will start the next leg after that. If either player is down three or more legs, they will continue to go first until the deficit is reduced to two legs. This is the PPD player advantage rule. If we go the distance, players will cork for a last leg decider. 
do we go to the distance tonight? And why is the answer yes? The answer is yes, because these guys are neck and neck competitors. Uh, neither of them wanted to go home at this stage in the bracket because, I mean, you're just a few rounds away from making some real serious straight cash money. Uh, we're going to notice that it's going to be uh, affairs of streaks. I don't think they're going to be neck and neck every single game. It's going to be two legs, then two legs, then two legs. It's going to be like a seesaw, tug and for, uh, uh, tug, tug of war, excuse me. Um, oh my, we all haven't slept enough. Uh, the Booyah Cup just kept us up <laughs> watching it, playing in it, seeing it, feeling it. But we're excited to be back. Well, I mean, both of them, you know, Ram had to drive up to Oklahoma and now he's drove home back down to Texas. So think about that trip for him. You know, Sugar Shane was in that intense Booyah Cup all weekend, so maybe the players are tired, too, even though we see a seven-mark start out of Ram. Well, Ram here, has, you know his arm's not going to be tired because he throws nine gram darts, and I think that was one of the most fascinating statistics about that gentleman. What yeah, I think it's gotten lighter. Yeah, nine gram darts. I don't even know if I could even get out of my hand. It'd float behind me. <laughs> Well, it's obviously doing doing pretty good with back to back sevens to open. Well, he fires those nine gram darts into the dartboard. Uh, they have a little pop to them when they hit, which is really impressive with nine gram darts. Um, I'm interested to see this battle here. Ram, I I'm going to give Ram an advantage. I just I think that uh, Sugar's been just having a little bit of an off month or two, and it's tough to find it's tough to find a confidence in the CSE Challenger series um this late into it you know i yeah I, it's you know the CSE Challenger series is a great during the week matches your players that are competing in it are always most of them are always in tournaments on the weekends so what fatigue factor is the player facing tonight coming from a long weekend no, Monday's usually a night off from for a tournament player, and now you're going right into an intense CSC battle. Well, we'll see. Into the lore of the CSC, and season two was the last time we saw Ram Guevara, and he the first time we seen him on stream was after the Oklahoma Throwdown, where he played really well there, and he played really well on stream. So I don't know. He might be riding the wave because he played really well this go round as well, from my understanding. Well, and. Uh. As Kaylor Owens, a.k.a. Fight Night 2.0, um, says in the chat here, says, Ram's a tow truck driver. He's very used to no sleep. He shouldn't be too tired after a long weekend. So as we get a little hat trick action out of Sugar Shane here, but looks like we're three darts away from leg number one, and that is how quickly the CSD Challenger Series can get going. But Ram's going to go ahead and point it up. <laughs> Sugar Shane needs a lot of bulls to do some damage there. He opted to go up on the second dart, and I'm not sure if I exactly agree with that unless he was very much convinced that he was blocked. Uh, it kind of gives Ram free reign to go right at the bulls. Sometimes you just want to stretch your arm a little bit, get ready for the next leg. I mean, you're throwing <laughs> back. When we see baggage, dude, I mean, I'll do it. Like, he guys needs three bulls, and I'm four marks and 17 bulls by. I'm just going to just you know, go up and stretch the arm for the next leg. Especially if you have the start. <laughs> yeah, look at Will Stewart in the chat. Nice of you to join us, buddy. Uh, it says Ram won, the, <laughs> Ram won the main event at Throwdown last year. Took fourth in two doubles titles this year. So there you go. I know Ram throws for Star City Amusement out of Houston area. Yep. There's a lot of players in that area. Who? Uh, where is Sugar Shane from? He is a Wisconsinite. So he is from, uh, I believe he's from a little bit more over towards the Minnesota border of Wisconsin. It's kind of that western Wisconsin area, I believe. Yeah, he's Alex? just outside of range from our streaming locations in Wisconsin. Uh, we try to do it within a 60-mile radius just to make it easy, because especially because most of these players are coming straight after work uh, to these matches. Yeah, I see uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's got good players. That Houston area's got good players. 
I mean, the CS the CSC produced three out of Star City, if I remember right. Lackey, Gates, and Ram. Well, you also have Division Two players you can't really forget about, like Daryl Cortez. Um, Division Two. Yeah, there's there's quite a few heavy hitters out of that Houston area. Of course, Leonard Gates uh, leads the way there. Our back to back Booyah Cup champion. If you I'm see not... those averages today. <laughs> Nick, what were you going to say, buddy? No, I, just to piggyback off what those averages you're talking about from Booyah, uh, Kenny Doyle said, I've never, I, I, he's like, Danny Batch has been playing as well as ever, if not the best he's ever played. He said that like a month or two ago uh, when he last saw him at a local tournament. And he said, I would wager to say he's averaging a 6 0 right now. Well, now the it's actually on paper. There is a 6 0 average for the second place player at the Booyah Cup. It is truly awe inspiring and uh, makes me feel like I'm not even worthy to call myself a dart player when I see stuff like that. No, uh, 6.0. Wow. A 6.0, and then Leonard averaged a 41 and 01. And this split is, bowl. yeah, split bowl double out. As we get a boom goes the dynamite there from Ram Gravera, our first on stream to this evening. And uh, I know Ryan was ready for that bad boy. I was actually ready for the boom goes the dynamite 38 times in a row with Danny and, and Gates, but you couldn't, you couldn't get it in edgewise because they were just too fast. Well, I think that Will and I looked over each other after the first couple and we both made a mental decision for me not to say that and then destroy the entire feed with a whole bunch of boom goes to dynamites. Just in case we wanted to, you know, repost that thing, maybe. Wow. <laughs> Ram needs all them 15s to get back in, even so he's shooting five, six, seven. Sugar is could come and come out of that first, that second leg with the lead. We got a one to zero for Ram on Sugar, and that's a good, good, good pop on that trip twenty here. Yeah, but it's only a four mark difference, which guarantees that at least one dart will go to the fifteen, although it will not get closed. Ram Ram triples fifteen twice here. Does he take a look at the seventeen? Every single time. I think so. Yeah. Well, there's the first one. Do we get the second one? As he goes 17. Hey, you got to call that one, Sean. Boom goes the dynamite there for Ram Gravera. Boom goes the Texan, even. <laughs> That's a oh, smash yeah. right there. Jeremy Byrne in the chat. Jeremy, I didn't want to see your name for like a good a good half minute or so. Um, sure but, on uh, Ram. <laughs> Ram, three bowls needed for the win. That one was way outside. Wow. That was, that was a great sweep by Shane. Sweep that 17 away, force him into three bowls. He missed it. It's it's game shot for, for uh, Mr. Sugar here. Needs one more. And he gets it. I don't know why I was worried at all. 4.90 here on leg number two. We'll get it done over the 5.56 five, from Ram Gerbera. And that's the difficulty of going – second in the CSC Jounder series, right? You got to throw 0. 0.6 above your average and hope that your opponent doesn't. Well, the key to going second in this one here is if your opponent opens nine, you have to back nine, and then you're playing to stay with him for his mistake, and then you can capitalize and take away the numbers he's using. In this case here, only a three mark out of Ram. Trip 19, trip 19, you can close a 20. Or nine mark the 19s and really put a lot of pressure back on your opponent. You're waiting for the mistake to flip the game back in your hand. I asked Sugar during his interview, I said, what'd you learn in your last go round of the CSC? And he's like, same thing I learned this go round. If you miss, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> well, you're seeing it there. Only a 2.5 after six darts from Sugar or from Ram. Sorry. Whoever wants to play darts. That's who we're that's who we're looking at here. Hey, how about uh Mark Crystal Rowe in the chat saying let's go Ram? We got Jacob Adelfinger, who I just got to meet this past weekend, saying what's up, fellas? What is up, sir? Great darts this weekend. 
Uh, Kaylor making a great point saying 41 uh, for Leonard, which translates to a 123 point uh, per round technically, which is basically a 6.0 and 0-1. It's true. I guess that's a, that's a true story. Math checks out. <laughs> Big round out of Ram right there. 19's gone, 20 pointed. He's really putting that pressure on Mr. Sugar Shane. You know oh, why is. I was really excited to call this match? Because I kept telling myself, Sugar, Sugar Shane, Sugar Shane. I got to get it out right. I don't want to <laughs> say Archives. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Just know that if you mispronounce a word, you'll, it'll live on forever. So. You'll get memes out of it, too. Like, oh, CO. Wisconsin is actually how you pronounce it. It's OCO or OCO, even though it does not look like that. But that was given to me earlier. Guys, let us know who you have in this one. Let us know where you are tuning in from. It's our favorite thing to talk about. But tonight's live stream is brought to you by AidToZDarts.com. And guess what? Even though we got a couple of men playing, it's all about the ladies today. A-Z Darts is celebrating Women's History Month by featuring female signature product on a dedicated landing page called Women in Darts. They are featuring some of their own sponsored players like Callie West, Robin Curry, Maria O'Brien, and Tori Kewish, along with some of the biggest names in darts worldwide. Just click the banner on their homepage over at a-zdarts.com. You can also take advantage of their Dart of the Month featuring the Shot Celt, Ernanos, and the recent Shot Darts launch. Pugas Dynamite. Just click the land banners on the homepage over a zdartscom Did I miss one? Did I? Oh, yeah. Times two. Well, it's because I was reading. Whenever that happens, uh, it's just half the time it's guaranteed to happen every time. And tonight's la- raffle winner, if you just leave a comment in our chat, hit that like on our page. Tonight's Draft One will receive their choice of any female signature flights found on the Women's in Darts page over at 8-cdarts.com. And men, you can throw with those too. I just want to take a brief look over here. We have a fourth commentator. A cat. Look at that. I'm, I'm not a cat. I'm live now. <laughs> you know, whenever you guys get me on the stream when I'm home, it's going to be funny stuff. <laughs> Well, all right, Grandpa. So, how's it feel? Are you nervous? What? For what? Grandpa. I'm Grandpa it would be times six. Well, how about Grandpa times seven? Is that nervous? Uh, well, this will actually will be number six. So, yes, it's it's <laughs> nerve-wracking because it's going to be a different situation. Three bulls at a ram. <laughs> nope. He is up. Oh. I got to call the match. Boom. There you go. A win. Uh, being grandpa is going to be great for the situation for Danny being in Holland and England a lot. Uh, the child will be traveling. Uh, probably be pretty good used to traveling a little bit. Um, Hannah's leaving Wednesday to be gone for a month. And then Danny will be back here in July for several months. In the During the big break of the, for the PDC for him. I like how you said several months instead of forever. Um, which <laughs> no, no, I will be honest with you. We're the biggest supporters for his, uh, his travel back and forth for the PDC, his home residence in the United States will be my house. So they don't have to worry about trying to have a home here and they already Love have that. a home over there. How about, uh, how about sugar Shane Johnson in the chat, uh, giving a expert opinion of his own saying, uh, sugar is trash. So, got to love Sugar Shane Johnson in between legs when he loses, uh, commenting in the chat. Well, about? It's, not, it's not like he's playing bad. Rams no. are playing well right now. I mean, five plus, five plus, seven plus. I mean, he's been averaging that five or better on every turn. I mean, it's if you're if you're a little bit off and you're averaging around four, six, four, seven in the current rate, and that's all you're producing, and your opponent like Ram is five plus, you're in the legs. You're just getting beat. Bless you. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. Hey, it's going to happen. Yeah, Ram throwing a 5.0, Sugar Shane at a 5.33. See, 
point in first. Let's see if he stays there. Uh, is he going to move now? He tried it. Doesn't get it done. Throws his heads up. Has a Cobra look as he walks back. And that's the pressure of the CSC Challenger Series. You can't even throw in a three mark and, and be happy with it. Well, okay. So a player like Ram, Ram right now is going to stay at least two triples in front of you. And he and he's out throwing you with two triples. So now that your opponent's out in front of you every time by two triples, you become where you have to go, I have to throw nine. I have to throw seven. I can't throw five. Five's getting going to get me beat because my opponent's keeping me two triples out every time. So that could get into your head and press you. It makes you want to, makes you want to, there's a big nine out of Ram right now. It makes yeah, you it as is. a player get to pressing and you get to pressing. And then you watch, you watch legs go by pretty quick. Well, you're definitely not wrong there. I will say this, looking at the body language of Sugar Shane as he's walking through the line and back from the line in between throws, he's actually, he's showing a bit of, and this is good just be me uh, hoping that everyone feels the same way I do, but he's looking tired. You know, like it, it, he's missing in the trip eight and he's kind of like glancing at it for a good second and a half. Like, I can't believe I just missed that. And then he's walking up slowly to the line. It just seems like he, uh, this, this is an awful long format for, for tired darts. Yeah. Well, you know, next weekend, if there's no tournament and then you have your CSC and then you took the weekend off and you come out and play flat too. So it can work in both ways. Well, that is true. It absolutely can. And Shane, a chance to steal the leg here. Now a much better chance. Now a much better chance. Sugar Shane Johnson goes three in the black to win leg number three. Wait, leg number four. What? Well, that's not a boom. That's not a nine mark for boom goes to dynamite, but that's three in the black to win. Yeah, that'll work. Well, Te technically he overachieved. He only needed two. I don't care. It's three <laughs> in the black. <laughs> double bull, double bull, double duel, double bull, baby. Well, I was told um, back when I first started playing metal Metalist Leagues, back in the day uh, when I first started playing, and those went away real quick, but there were the little the little pins that you'd win in league play. And I remember the three in the black was the hardest pin to get in Metalist. RWH in chat saying, where is this being played? This is actually a uh, remote stream with a bunch of different uh, moving parts here. We have right there, you see Houston, Texas, and then uh, Aseo, Wisconsin. Did I already butcher it? Aseo. Aseo, Wisconsin. And then I'm over here in Davenport, Florida. We got uh, Indianapolis uh, for Mr. Sean, and then yep. uh, Missouri for Mr. Ryan. Uh, Ozarks of Missouri. People think think I'm from Kansas City or St. Louis. I'm from down in the Ozarks. Oh, so he is a money launderer. Money launderer, big time. <laughs> uh, so, do you live in like the touristy Ozarks area, or do you I'm live thirty five miles uh, north of Branson, which you guys would, yep. would would call that? We got Bass Pro Shops here in town, but where a lot of people get get a little bit confused is I travel to St. Louis all the time to play darts. I mean, I'm only two hours from St. Louis. So, I mean, I'm playing darts up there on, on as much as I am here. Well, I like how everyone enjoys my pronunciation of, ah, CO. Ah, CO. Did that say <laughs> or right? how much they yeah. hated my butchering. <laughs> it was probably the second thing. Yes, our, our WH, our, these guys are playing in different places, and we are all commentating from different places around the country, which makes us uh, very unique, to say the least. Yeah, and a big shout out to Partners Promoting Darts. I mean, they're the uh, masterminds behind the inception of the CSC uh, using their nationwide league system, developing a system to have cameras installed in each of these locations, and then us kind of centralizing the live streaming process to make this uh, duct tape and glue uh, version of a remote tournament. And it somehow works sometimes, and we appreciate everyone of you uh, tuning in, supporting, and uh, giving us your love. 
uh, Sugar Shane just did a big, big run right there while we were talking. Goes down Ram, pushes him into the 16s. He's got, he has got the 18s. Trips this 18, he'll crash out that 16. Oh, he went to the 15s just like a limb would. And look at that. You said he was tired. There's another nine. Well, boom goes the Wisconsinite there for Sugar Shane. Ryan, we know you are. Trust us. And you got a lot of weird ones, too, on those uh, on those city names. That is for sure. Sorry, different Ryan. Not you, Ryan. Oh, I was like, uh, what did I say? <laughs> it, mentally, I could read your mind there. I knew exactly what you were thinking. Great. Sugar Shane. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here, so it wasn't that scary, I guess. Sugar Shane making sure that Ram is really pressed hard on that bull. That bull's been a troublesome for Ram tonight. Maybe he can tighten it up in this round to be ready for the next one. Oh, wow. That last start gave him nothing. Uh, that sucks. Hey, speaking of bull, are you were you tired of seeing all the missed bulls that they had to keep punching in over the weekend? Honestly, uh, it was worse at Indiana State uh, a few weeks ago. So when I was there, that one was definitely more frustrating, to say the least. But luckily, I'd say... Maybe one dart misregistered where it bounced out. The rest of them all kind of stayed in there. So that was that was a win, I guess. It's going to happen over the course of a tournament weekend. Those mm -hmm. bulls, those matrixes are going to get uh, worn out. You also have the situation where when, when you're punching dart tips through the board, a lot of people don't understand that that can affect the matrix of a dart board um, pretty easily. So, yeah, you know. It is what it is. Clayton Funkhauser asking who's commentating or who's bringing the funk, as I like to say. And uh, I'm Sean Green, joined by Ryan Mooneyham with young buck Nick Darachi Deshera alongside the two of us. So we're a three-person boot this evening. And uh, Don't forget my cat. And the cat. What's the cat's name? Pete. And Pete. And Pete the cat. My cat so. Fred is not uh not made for the camera. He gets camera shy very easily. Dang, Ram's still hanging in there. He keeps on that bull, pressing sugar in the back of that eighteen. Sugar misses that eighteen. Ram can crack back, but a trip eighteen and a double bull shot, and it's gone. Three to two lead. Ever since I said that Sugar Shane was sleeping on the job, he has just flipped everything around like. He listened to me or something. Um, RWH never asking a stupid soft tip, tip question. If a dart hits the board and breaks off the tip and the dart itself falls out, does the score count? Um, well, board don't lie at that point in time. So, yeah, you might be able to see the tip and everything in there, but the dart's not in there. So it is a little bit different than steel tip, I guess, on that question. And I don't think I've ever actually seen that situation happen. Have you? Right. I've not I've not seen that situation. Um, I've seen where the um, so you got three black tips broken in there, and I have seen other players that said their tip broken. It's in scored in the twenty, but they only scored it to five, but you couldn't just decipher the two. But I've never actually seen that or heard that call. That whatever the board register, the board register. If the dart's not on the board, the dart's not on the board. You can't prove that's your broken tip. That's true. As boom goes. The Texan. That's, Ram a big shot out of, that's a big shot out of Ram. Yeah, he needed that to kind of sway the beginning of this leg. Well, I mean, I have to tell you this, but I, I see Sugar a little settled in. A little, little rough for the first two legs. He's got settled in. He's grabbed three. Kind of pushed Ram back a little bit. When you're when you come out strong and you're leading, you can kind of sit back on your toes like, okay, I've got this, and all of a sudden your opponent gets strong on you. You got to regroup. And I think we're seeing a regroup out of Ram. Well, he's wearing his hey dudes. He knows how to play darts. So, dude, <laughs> you, you got to be wearing your hey dudes in order to, to throw well. That's that's the new rules here. And unless you're soldier or Danny and the talent level in your arm is just doesn't make your footwear matter. Other than that, you better wear in those hey dudes. What's up, Chenzo? Saying what's up, boys. Rich, Jacob Worthley saying, uh, glad to have Mooney back on for commentary as well as the Nick DeShera. 
and uh, asking me if I still have a voice left. I'm a professional at this, but no, not really. I'm faking it. We actually used an AI bot to uh, simulate Sean's voice. It's actually just uh, Pete the Cat talking. <laughs> it takes right. <laughs> I'm here live. I'm I'm not a cat. Crystal Anderson, uh, you know, putting me in my place a little bit, which, you know, let's be honest, I need everyone's small saying punching tips shouldn't affect the matrix. Uh, the segments are like an inch inch thick with a secure backing on them, so the tips fall into that. Well, there you go. Single bowl, double bowl, game shot, Mr. Ram. What's our score line now, gentlemen? 3-3. Three, three. Who said this wasn't going to be a blowout? Not this guy. No, I did not. I Listen, <laughs> I definitely did not expect a blowout. If anything, I knew before, like as I woke up this morning, how I felt, this was going to a last leg decider. And I don't mean like intuition. I mean my body is so dead tired that this was going to go nowhere else. But a last league decider. 17 games of all cricket. I'm just surprised they haven't pointed over a thousand a few games yet. Now, Ryan, walk us through here. Sugar Shane going first decided to start on the 19s. How do you feel about the decision? Well, so sometimes when you when you look at your last two turns and you open on the 20s, trip 20 outside, outside. Then you go the next thing, trip 20, single one, outside. But then you were when you were on the 19s, it was triple 19, triple 19, triple 19. Sometimes those guys like, I need... The nine. I want triple 19, triple 19, nine, triple 19. Even though Ram would have the bigger segment on 20s, a seven mark still keeps him underneath. You've got to push him. So that's why a lot of those guys open on 19s. They want that immediate push to make those guys have to go up and throw the nine. They don't throw the nine. You trip the 19. You take the 20. You grab the 18. Three big segments are yours. And now you're in the point lead. Well, there you go. You know it's what? A, I like Ryan. Actually, yeah, that gives was way more insight. than Will's ever like answered any question ever. That was amazing. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, let me do it. Uh, well, um, I think it. I don't know. We'll just have to see what he does. Uh, I don't know. Uh, chives. <laughs> you know, I got in trouble for uh, being surprised on a stream uh, in Las Vegas when. Uh, Puglio beat Gates in that final. I mean, it shocked me because that was never the route I would ever went. And Puglio went, it worked, but it was so different that I went, holy, yeah, I said the word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Hey, I. what's really funny is I can honestly tell there are moments where my teacher filter just automatically stops myself from saying the rest of the word. Um, I have been... I've been caught there a couple times. <laughs> Brandon Neal saying, I thought I heard Will there for a second. <laughs> Ram's on his heels. He's going to say He's Sugar Shane. Go. But Sugar's, Sugar's got a three-house lead. He may be down a little bit of points, but that three-house lead sometimes is real strong. He's going very thermonuclear in a the strategy. They're going wide, focusing on getting those numbers, not worrying so much about the point lead because he knows that each of those houses is more marks in his favor, even if the scoreline doesn't show it. You know, and so when you're playing this, when you're playing someone at your level or higher, you have to look for different ways to beat them. If you try to stay in that traditional close point, close point, close point, you're going to get beat because your opponent's going to figure out. Sometimes you got to go, I've got to go back to our seven, drop out the 17, 16, 15. Maybe I trap him up on the 18th and I took the bull away. All he can do is point. Like right there, he's kind of setting up a small trap, even though he's down a little bit. He's got him trapped on the bull. He can't do anything about it. Is he going to try to throw nine to close everything out? No, he has to go for the bull. Well, that one's in the dead center. <laughs> and then he gets rid of the 19s. Because that was a good team. start. Because yep. if sugar chip sugar falls short, he does have a nine mark to win. Now, of course, after this league, we will be heading to our break here, but we will not be gone for very long as we're going to have a chat with both of these players, see the inside and the inner amalgamations of their darting genius, as some may say. Um, but no, besides, one, no, no one, no one, no one would say that except for you. You made right. it up. That's not even a real word, and I'm an English teacher. That's true. 
<laughs> I thought I was a real world, but I don't wear shoes in the Ozarks. <laughs> All right, Sugar Shane does take a 4-3 to three lead as we will head to our break. Guys, don't go anywhere. Stay with us. A lot more action coming your way from the CSC Challenger Series. Hit the like button. Hit that share button. Sugar Shane Johnson, Ram Gravera Jr., 4-3 to three scoreline. Race to 9. We'll be back after the short break. Can you uh, give us a little bit of a summary of how long you've been playing darts and kind of what got you into the game for those that are watching you for the first time? I've been playing darts 13 years, um, shoot nine gram darts, custom signatures. Um, and that's all I've been doing, man. It's been set up with my dad bringing me out to the bar to have fun. That's all I did. And then I started seeing a lot of competitive dart wise. I started getting more into it, so that's how it started. Tonight, you are playing Sugar Shane Johnson, which is one of the higher averages at the start of the season here. Uh, what's going to be your game plan as far as uh, approaching this match? Yeah, I'm just going to go play, have fun with it, and try to stay within point or point range. And you know what? If it comes down to it, I know we played it in a uh, DLC finale over there and we played a, our, our match and it, it's a short match but I mean we went the distance and it was back and forth so we know what we got to do to play against each other well we're excited to see how this one pans out because you both are phenomenal shooters uh now let's uh, fast forward a few weeks here what would you do with the prize money if you won I yeah, just use it to further dart wise you know play in different places new places maybe you know as long as I'm just trying to keep it steady with that throughout the year. Well, we're excited to see how that pans out for you. Is there anything you want to say to your friends, fans, family, or anybody else watching along? I appreciate all the fans and uh, people that have supported me throughout this whole thing, uh, especially my sponsors, Yabuya, Demon Darts. Wolfman and well, we're uh, looking forward to seeing it ourselves unfold right on the live stream Ram Guevara jr. Taking on sugar Shane Johnson uh, In CSC division one. We wish you nothing but the best of luck. My name is Ram jr. And you're watching the CSC challenge series. Hey everyone I'm Jen mounts with a to z darts.com It's women's history month and we're celebrating by encouraging you all to support the ladies in our industry We've dedicated a page on our website called women in darts where you can browse all of our female signature darts and flights and If you don't see your favorite player Player on that page just check with your local supplier don't forget to also thank your female bar owners league organizers or women that are employed by manufacturers and darts and if you love our company we're always proud and happy to show that we have a strong female leadership and perspective here our CEO is a woman we have a female webmaster and general manager we have female leads in the internet, wholesale, and warehouse departments. I myself oversee all creative projects and our sister companies, Magicware and USA Darts Production. So long story short, there are so many women out there that make our world go round, and we hope you take some time this month to show them your appreciation. Thanks for watching. My name is Shane Johnson. Uh, I play at 7th Street Pub for Stansfield Vending. Well, Sugar Shane Johnson, welcome back to the CSC. It was a long time coming and we knew it was going to happen again. I proclaimed at the start of the season it was year of Sugar Shane, yet we are looking at a loser's side bracket match. First off, how are you doing? Sorry about that. I, uh, my darts lately have not been great, so probably not what you want to hear picking me to win this, but uh, I'm hoping tonight they come out of a slump. But last month or so, I haven't played as much as I had been playing, but... Uh, Hopefully tonight's night, I guess. For those that are going to be watching you for the first time, can you give us a history of your darts and uh, what got you into it? I uh, actually, so my best friend growing up, um, it was like a week before Dart League started. I was 21. Uh, they needed somebody, didn't even have a set of darts. Uh, came by, threw, used his. Uh, I grew up on the golf course, so I always had pretty good hand-eye coordination. So uh, I was pretty good at it right away with my buddy. and. Uh, Took off from there, I guess, been playing ever since. Well, you've done well in the past, and when we featured you last time in the CSC, you made a really good run. Do you feel like you learned anything from your previous experience going into this season of the CSC? I learned you can't miss very much against these guys because every time you have a bad round, they, they take advantage. So, I mean, it's every week you come play, it's against a guy that's a mid fours to a five. So, uh, if you don't bring it, you're going to get beat. So, you better bring it. 
Well, tonight you have a tough opponent with Ram Guevara Jr. And he is no slouch. We've seen him on the CSC before. Uh, what's gonna be your game plan into tonight's match? Well, actually, Ram gave me my first loss at the CSI in Kansas City uh, first round. So that's the only time I've ever thrown Ram. I don't know a lot about Ram. Um, I know, like I said, Ram's a uh, mid to high fours, like most of these guys. So I just gotta go hit my darts because I don't necessarily ever have a game plan. I a lot of time play pretty unorthodox. So just gotta hit what I'm aiming at and hope for a victory. And then let's say uh, you get the victory tonight and then for the next couple of weeks, what would you do with that prize money if you won? Well, same as last year, I still got three young kids here. So they take up a lot of time, a lot of money. So I'm sure I'd spend some on some dark stuff and then uh, the rest go towards those expensive kids. <laughs> well, fair enough and uh, completely understandable. Uh, is there anything you want to say to your friends, fans, family, or anybody else watching along? Yeah, I appreciate all of you. You know, every single week I get messages, texts, snaps from everybody and kind of overwhelming at times realizing, you know, and understanding how many people are in your corner that you forget sometimes. So thanks everybody because you guys make us all a lot more fun. Well, we're excited to have some sugar on the stream tonight going up against Ram Guevara Jr. We wish you nothing but the best of luck. I'm Shane Johnson. You're watching the CSC Challenger Series. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed those two interviews uh, between Sugar Shane Johnson and Ram Gravera. Now let's see the battle. Four to three lead, Sugar Shane Johnson over Graham. Over Ram? Wow. Did I just call him Graham? Over Ram Gravera. Uh, I'm Sean Green. Unfortunately, I'm going to say my name after that. Uh, joined by Ryan Mooneyham and Nick Desher in the background. Uh, we are live here at the stadium in Houston, Texas. Ram Gravera getting us going here for Star City Amusements. He's taking on Sugar Shane Johnson from Osseo, Wisconsin. Osseo, that's it, right? Osseo. Osseo. So was it Sturvent that you guys were at? Sturvent, Wisconsin, if I remember right? Sturdivant, yeah. Sturdivant, Sturdivant. Yep. And it took me about three days to get that right. And I was only there too. <laughs> Look at Jason Watt in the chat saying, Mooney. Hey, there's PDG. That's, uh, I'll tell you what, man. I, 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 I hope you hear this, but man, you have been on a run this year that's been incre impressive. Keep going. I'm, I'm a big fan favorite of the big, J of, of big Jason Watt, BDG, baby. Yeah, he's okay. No, yeah, I, he's love, okay. I love him to death. <laughs> Um, him play. He's, he's just, you know, he's, he's smacking that 80 average on the on the 01 uh, for the seal tip. You know, he's five plus in that and in, in, on the soft tip boards. It's good to see. Good action. Yeah, you want to talk about someone who we'd love to have back at the um in the Booyah Cup next year? That's that's one for sure. Shane in there, uh, saying chive on. <laughs> chive on, baby. I'm allowed to say it without anyone yelling at me tonight, so that's good. Chive, 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 chive. All right. Got them out there. Let's see if we can get these guys uh, chucking and jiving with their darts. Darts. Paul Rogers, it was a pleasure to meet you this weekend, sir. Uh, thank you for coming out a couple of those days. Um, and shout out to the Harrises. For so that the cherry pie and apple pie, they um, that was delivered to me yesterday, and it is uh, safely at home in the fridge. So excited, excited for that! And Jason says making plans to be in Stewartvent or Sturtevant next year. See, I still don't know. Well, good because I'm making plans to be there next year. It's already on my request off. Ooh, I'm not playing. I'm, I want that in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play that. I want to call that. I was about to say, you were supposed to be there with us this past weekend. Yeah, unfortunately, what, what took me away this year is I went to the World Masters for Steel Tip, and I was gone 14 days, so I kind of burned up a little bit of vacation this year. So you go 14 days overseas, and then you turn on, come back, and go a week to Vegas, back to back. You kind of burn up a little bit of vacation. So, yeah, gotta, I got I to gotta, I gotta pay the bills around here, too. 
I don't know what's going on here in the background. Uh, something definitely happened there. Did we lose somebody? No, no, they're both there. I think they're just something happened. Oh, it was a with, triple. Yeah, with a miss dart. So they're going back and remarking that. Whoop. There you go. Whew. It makes a big difference. Yeah, it does. Six mark versus three. Here comes Ram. Now back up ready to go. That's the one thing about the remote play is that if you're not uh, really talking to each other and able to do that, some of those can be frustrations quickly, to say the least. Well, so in your live matches, you know, you show your opponent, hey, this is what you're going to do. When you do this remotely, you know, most of the time, you know, it's like, all right, whatever it is, fix it. But sometimes you got to take the picture, and then you got to text the picture, then they see it's in the board, and you got to back it up, then you got to fix it, and then it gets fixed. And it's a pain in the tail, but boy, you know, you, I mean, it's the difference between a triple for that one. I mean, that's a, that's a big shot right there. Early on in the in the leg, it definitely is. Oh, yeah. I mean, because so, right. So answer this for me, Sean. Why did why did no. Graham go go seventeenth instead of the nineteenth? He's been kind of just moving around. I think he's just setting up uh, his plays for later on. It's again, I I like to call cricket chess versus the checkers of 01. And every once in a while, you're you're working three steps ahead instead of one step ahead. Or maybe well, he just missed by two. Yeah, well, well then I don't think so. Sugar <laughs> tried try to counter with that trip seventeen. Mm -hmm. So it's that two-house segment. A lot of players like to have a point lead close, but they want two-house segment, two-house segment, two-house segment. I want to be two houses and just up in points. Some players want to be 150 points in front, don't care how many segments they're going to play with. They're just going to keep their points up. I like well, the I idea of having multiple houses versus trying to build on those points. Well, we just saw Daryl Cortez walk away there. Daryl Cortez actually was playing a league match with Ram earlier uh, before the stream. Well, look at that. As a matter of fact, I played a league match before the stream. Well, I don't want to point this out too much, but you might want to move that camera up just about Eight an feet. inch. Or so. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Way better. Now. Now we're not going to get any comments on anything else besides just the wonderful darts. And uh-oh. Somebody's joining us. This is scary. This has never happened before in CSE Chowder Series history. What's going on, fellas? Oh, my goodness gracious. Dad's home. Daddy. Dad is home for sure. We got Bryson here with me for just a second, so I figured I'd jump on and say hello to you guys. I just got home from... Wisconsin, so 6.30 wake-up call, two and a half hours of teardown, 10-hour drive home. Why not? Hey, you well, guys to me on the phone. There's Bryson. We, that was Bryson. <laughs> well, what do we got? We got a good matchup here, huh? Oh, yeah. It's a great one here. Four to three score line here in leg number eight. And uh, how about Sally... Kuehler in the chat saying, good luck, Ram, son, in the in parentheses. So there you go. Mom's watching along. Right now, Sugar Shane has been pushing out those points, but Ram has closed down the board with a two-house lead and a slight point lead. Still playing that two houses. Oh, there's a good five mark there from Sugar Shane. Yeah, one of the one of the fun things from this weekend was uh, apparently Bryson has figured out how to call Dad um, on the phone. So um, he uses the, I believe it's the Ring app camera on the on the on the doorbell. So he'll just go out there and call Dad. Talk to Dad. I just do minutes. it on a live stream. <laughs> Two All houses, right. Two houses in the point lead. Goodbye, six teams. Well, he's gonna gonna stay at it until they're gone. 
And he goes back to point on dart number three, 688 to 580 in the point total. And guys, A to Z darts is sponsoring tonight's live stream giveaway. Tonight's raffle winner will receive their choice of any female signature flights found on the women's and darts page over at a-zdarts.com. It makes a great gift for any husband or wife. Uh, so leave a comment or chat, hit that like button to be automatically entered for your chance to win. Rhino Flynn saying sugar nine, six is his final score prediction. Let us know in the chat who you guys have Ryan, who wins this thing. As so we go to a four, four score line. Is it me? Yep. Uh, I'm putting, I'm putting my money on, on Ram. Okay. I'm saying Ram sneaking it out at the end. So you say nine eight? Nine eight Ram. I mean we got a four four line now. Um, I don't know. I'm just seeing some things out of Ram and uh Sugar's gonna have to change a little bit to to match him. Nick? As I said from the beginning, it's gonna be back and forth. I personally am leaning towards Ram at the moment. I'm going nine eight. Okay, you guys are both just kind of on the same page. Hmm. Well, how about this? Update Mike Maloney up over Gabe Steffen, which, by the way, congratulations to Gabe Steffen. You want to talk about when we talked about favorites and top four on the winner side and all that? I don't think Gabe was mentioned very often at all. So for him to be in that position right now is pretty impressive, but he is down the same I would be against Mike Maloney for nothing early on in this DSC. Smash. Smash. Probably wouldn't let me stay in this, but he did finish fourth place, the Booyah Cup, uh, this past weekend. Losing to Danny Baggish. It was a good match. Yeah. A great match, even. You can call it dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite there for Ram Gravera. There's number nine. Well, I kept myself on mute because this little guy was yelling into this dang thing for a minute, so... That's quite all right. I just wanted to say thanks for taking my job, Mooney. You're doing a great job, you two. You sound fantastic. I listened to you the whole drive up here. Keep at it, boys. Nick, solid work, buddy. Oh, I thanks, thought you were Dad. jumping in and relieving me for the second half. I was ready to go to bed. <laughs> I got to deal with this little hoodlum now and, and put him to bed, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> well, thanks for coming by and saying hello, the legendary, the goat of live streaming, Will Stewart. <laughs> And Bryson. Yeah. <laughs> and Bryson there at the and end. Man, we've had Bryson. We've had Pete the Cat. Hannah Stewart says, let Bryce scream, bro. The, the <laughs> lore is developing on the CSC Challenger Series today. Hey, when you put me on, crazy things happen. <laughs> but fair enough. Well, Ram Gravera throwing a 6.25. Early on, early on in this leg is Shane's going to look over at the 18s. You got to load the 18s here. You're going to have to have at least six, and he's only eight manages three. Yeah, Ram I've never... Can... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Ram will crash that 18, and he'll move that. He'll want, he wants that second house. He surprised me on that one. I figured he'd get rid of the 18 and then go after the 17s. He likes having two houses and the point lead. Well, he'll take 136 of those points uh, with only one house, I guess. I guess he's not as greedy as as he probably should be. But it's never a good sign to see the 20s wide open and you went first. Now, Sean, earlier you were talking about 1,000-point games. I think we're getting on track to start getting some of these high-scoring affairs as this match is starting to drag out a little bit and it's starting to get a little bit more knuckle-punchy between these players. No, you know that they're going to be a couple of heavyweights throwing some haymakers from time to time. This one right now being thrown by Graham. By Graham. That's twice now. By Ram G. I just want to put the G in front of Ram. I don't know why. Sugar was so frustrated with his first start there. He fully walked off, did a circle before coming back and hitting a six mark, which is an impressive refocusing, but kind of shows where his mental has been at this match. And he needs to get on top of that before it gets too late. Goodbye, 16. Goodbye, Bull. Nah, I just manages to, but nice, good lake. So I'm going to talk about that. So when you're playing a game of misses, which is soft hip, you have, if you miss, you have to refocus. 
because what will happen is is you'll get mad and you'll short arm or you'll or you'll sky one high and you now you've lost three darts or yourself off the line come back refocus like it's a brand new start and then six mark the 16. that's exactly what he did well it did no good ryan as he wins as ram wins that leg with a 5.86 average and he takes the lead again for the first time since leg number one. Now up five to four. I just personally believe with the way this momentum is going right now, and while you're you're exactly right, Ryan, he did a great job of refocusing, recentering, and following through. Every time he has one of those frustrated back off moments is one of those times where it just kind of weighs in heavier and heavier. You get more and more frustrated. It builds up, uh, and you kind of just have to relax and have fun with it. I mean, right now, Ram has shown one emotion the whole time, which is serious. Well, so right now, Ram is, is on the high of hitting. He's hitting and scoring. He's hitting and scoring. Sugar Shane's back on his heels, and he's hitting and then missing. So what's, what's bothering Sugar is the fact that there was that triple 19 single single. I needed to have six or triple 19 single outside. I had to have that. Whereas Rand's been triple 19, triple 19, go after the 20. It's it, it just the momentum swing. It's like football. You get momentum swing, especially in a game of misses. And that's what soft tip cricket is about. First one to miss, first one to lose. Uh, I mean, you got a point there. How about this? I set this up early on about Sugar Shane being a little bit tired, maybe. Potentially, as he goes in, goes ahead and ruins that whole thing I was about to say. Boom goes the dynamite. Thanks, Shane. Um, never mind. I'm just going to shut up. Like I should do more often. And well, I think the guy would agree with me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Johnson is pretty well experienced in this game. And I think he has the ability to pull up his bootstraps and nine mark the 20s like he just did. But can he? My question is can he hold it together for another eight legs? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I'm questioning it. Can he do this for a whole nother eight legs? If the momentum goes in his way and his drilling picks back up and he gets confidence in his in his throw and he stops stops the thoughts of, of, of missing, now he can switch the he can switch gears quickly. We've seen it out of him before. He definitely has the ability to throw five fives for quite a long time. I just I think that might end up being being the difference in the day. You guys are calling nine eight Ram. I think it might only it might be nine seven Ram. At Brandon Neal in the chat saying Ram is throwing very smoothly and comfortable. This is the potential to get ugly. He's even saying. Well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna take the hot take here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put this out here. Sugar Shane has the higher ceiling, but right now Ram has the better form. I mean, he is feeling comfortable. He is playing his game, and he's not doing anything earth-shattering. He's playing very well. And the difference is, Sugar Shane, we're seeing moments of his in-form brilliance where he is just smashing everything. And then uh, then the next turn, Sugar is getting frustrated because the dart left his hand kind of funny, and you see him have to walk off the line. So it's really going to see. Can that ceiling be reached by Sugar before before Ram's form cracks? Uh, which one is going to, which cup is going to overfill first, really? Well, that's all the questions. It depends on when the momentum, where is the momentum late in this match? If it's, if it's a seven all look and all of a sudden sugar gets a quick momentum, two legs go this way, it's over. If the momentum switches real quick and, you know, same thing for Ram, you know, it just, all of a sudden you can get two legs and the momentum goes your way just like that. Or you miss twice and you get in your head and you go up and you, you let a leg go that you shouldn't let go. And then next thing you know, you don't come out strong in the final leg, you're out. It's 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 just it's amazing how quick it can change in six and nine darts at this level. Well, Rhino Flynn's saying if he gets tired, I'm talking about sugar, uh, he will just grab another bucket of beer. He will be fine. So there, there you go. go. Bring your bucket of beer. <laughs> well, a uh, nice seven uh, mark there from Ram. It's a big, big smash right there. All right. Look at this from Sugar. Oh, oh. 17 to go away. 
You saw the frustration from the previous go round where he just needed to hit two single 17s, did not find the single, fell outside into a neighbor, and he even, after hitting a very well timed seven mark, seemed almost upset because he's like, I should have closed it on that third dirt there, and instead uh, gave Ram an opportunity to get the point lead again. Uh, well, he just- Ram should have stayed on that 17 for another turn. Unfortunately, he went after that 18. Now, if he closes the 18, it's massive. But now he's put himself at least a six mark on 16s to even closely look at that 18. Now he just needs to stay 16s 100%. Yeah, and only gets five of them, so not quite the point lead out of it. I think, momentum's, I think the momentum is switching to Johnson in this leg quickly. Well, you see him trapping on the 16s a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what... What what I what two houses will do and the point lead it just traps him where he can't do nothing but try to fill up the sixteens. I don't know a single sixteen there would have given him a two point or a trip sixteen there would have given him a two point lead. Do you go eighteens no. and fifteens? <laughs> Absolutely. You fill up the sixteens. I'll argue on that. When you fill it up, try to catch him on a miss. And normally I would, I would say that's right. But what the fact is that sugar Shane has shown signs of a shaky confidence. If Ram goes up there and if he misses 18, he still gets a, a third dart at the 16. If he trips that first 16 hits the white horse, it almost guarantees him to win purely off a momentum standpoint. Obviously statistically, you're right. Absolutely. Betting the 16s will be better by the book. But I think in this given scenario with this way, the canvas has been painted. That's how I see the picture. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. In that exact moment. You guys are way too nice to each other. Keep fighting. It's our first time ever talking together. We're having a great time. I I mean, come on. I mean, it's it's a big... I don't know. I won't fight with you, Nick. (laughs) I just know that I would. I would have filled up the 16s, personally. And and that's why we brought on an expert, right? Uh, To give us... I don't know about no expert. (laughs) Well, you were going to play in CSC Division One last season, so uh, if I anyone belongs, it's you. I, I, I had a stinking heart attack. Well. Do you know I've qualified for two CSC Challenger Series, and two times I've had heart problems that kept me out of it. We better stop qualifying for the CSC Challenger Series. If I don't qualify for the CSC Challenger Series, I stay out of ICU. <laughs> exactly. Ram had winning darts in his hand there. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed that like I did. I, he may have not noticed it because at that point, I probably would have taken the shot just for the haymaker. Well, <laughs> Sugar goes, yay. I can see it in his bottom screen. That's exactly the what he just gave out there. Five to five score line. And he wins a scrappy leg. So here we go. Ram Gravera. Now going first. He kind of fakes me out every once in a while with that start that he does. But if it's not the exact, I guess, rhythm that he's looking for, he'll kind of restart it. Stop it and restart it. Mike Guthrie says, ball game sugar, night boys. Ooh. He's he's even good enough just to leave. He's like, I'm... I know how this is going to go. Jeremy Reigns just uh, sent me a friend request on Facebook and then proceeded to send me a video, which is a very dangerous thing for somebody you don't have added on Facebook already. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. But it is his three-year-old watching along tonight and saying, boom goes the dynamite. Uh, <laughs> and I just want to give a little shout out there. Thank you for that one. Yeah, that's a, wow, that's a win. For him to give your signature catchphrase too. That's a, what a great, great thing to give him to. No, mine's the chive one. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not take that away from Will. No, you got to keep that with Will. I mean, right now he's chiving. I'm sure at home. I bet he's tired. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the life of a streamer! Not only you stream 14, 18 hours, you got to drive home and pack up. Bam! Well, big just... hit right there. Goodbye, nineteen. Let's just talk a little bit more about how Shauna will get no rest. Because uh, Tuesday, you got the siege, right? Is there a siege tomorrow? And then Wednesday, sure. you got the CSC. And then Friday and Saturday, you have the uh, Nationals by PPD. There is no rest here for the streamers. 
Sean is yawning at the prospect in the background. I fell asleep listening to that. Um, and not out of boredom, out of necessity, because I'm going to need to be awake for those. Um, no, it. you know what? I actually get questioned uh, often about whether or not, like, man, I'd be so worn out from all this. And listen, I'm not going to lie to you. This is tiring. It's a tiring uh, thing to do, but the fort- to be fortunate enough to be able to do this, uh, to be live multiple times a week, uh, to have people notice me by my, by thank God my voice and not my name or my face, um, is is a blessing. It's a blessing to have this rolling darts. And as tired as I am, I'm just as excited to do this and just excited to do tomorrow and and Wednesday and this weekend as anything else. It's all different. It's all little different nuanced stuff, right? I'm going to get a different uh, CSE Challenger Series on Wednesday than we're going to get tonight. Just a different version. Sugar having himself an off leg. Rams crashing. Here we go. Bye-bye, bull. Bye-bye, bull. Bye-bye, game. Hello, winner, Ram. Six to five lead now for Ram Gravera. This might be the first time we have um, all agreed on who we think is going to pull this out at the end. And to be honest with you, we're all picking someone that at the beginning of the CSC Challenger Series, uh, we would have favored the other person probably. Well, I I mean, there's literal evidence of me saying I was picking Sugar Shane here. And I, and I still stand by that Sugar Shane is one of the best players in the CSC and has the capability to win it. Uh, the problem is he has to convince himself that that's the case as well and have that confidence going to the board. And, yep. You know, uh, darts is also a game of peace and valleys. There's so many times where you're going up there and you're playing way above your, uh, you know, way above your weight bracket and then times where you're going below your belt it's really hard to kind of find that consistency and uh right now he's just on a little bit of a valley but that peaks right around the corner yep you either got peaks and valleys or you got hills and trenches shoots and ladders (laughs) hills and trenches means that it gets it's a bit lower on the trenches and it's not as high in the hill as it is the, the peak Well, I, don't know. I just play darts. I usually suck, but I play darts. <laughs> well, Ryan, we know that's not right, first of all. But second of all, you close your ears because I'm about to tell you how to become eligible to play in major PPD events like the CSC Challenger Series. How? And I do how not, do we and, I don't, and I do not want you in the hospital, sir. But players well, become eligible. So <laughs> I am working on trying to get into maybe a few, but I'll, I'll sit up now. Well, players become eligible for those by playing in major PPD leagues and daily remote tournaments, or DRTs. Leagues are starting daily, so get involved by going to dartstoc.com and checking out the map. The map will show any location with G3 boards within the PPD system. They are always accepting new members, so if you're not seeing anything in your area, have your vendor contact us on the website. From there, you can sign up for leagues on the website. It doesn't take a ridiculous amount of games to be eligible either. Consistently playing one league per week will keep a player eligible for this event in the future. Again, go to D-A-R-T-S-T-O-C dot com to get signed up today. Now, Ryan, you can relate to this as you and I have both qualified for TOC events in the past. And we've qualified for uh, CSC events and whatnot as well. I mean, as far as playing in the program, I mean, how hard or easy was it for you to sign up for your first league? Well, considering I, I've been in the program for 10 years and considering that when I started, there was no re- remote side to it. So we had local leagues that we turned that the PPD managed. So basically our, we had shared our stats went to them and then we had a, you know, our area would qualify for the TOC. I was in one of the very first remote leagues um, here in town. And that was back with the whole lady Bly and Pearl Watkins and stuff like that. So then the remote side is basically, there was a decision to try to push as much as you can remote, you know, try to get 25% or 30% of your leagues to remote. And you got, you you know, it helped people qualify for the things like the CSI. I put all my leagues into the remote and basically all of a sudden now 
your you, whatever cab, you can pick whatever night, you can pick whatever location, you can pick whatever friend, you can do whatever you want, play multiple leagues. Next thing you know, it, it, it's just exploded. And then we had the PPD Nationals. We had the CSI Challenger Series come on. We had the CIC, CI, CSI at the actual TOC. So now all of a sudden you got you got meat to play for. There's a carrot. There's 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 a there's there's something to play for. It doesn't matter if you're the bottom player or you're the top player. You win a TOC event, it's the same money. Outside of some of the special events, so it was a very incredible growth I've seen over the years in the PBD. I also know that me personally, as a player, um, I have played in one, a league every week for the last ten years. Maybe take a, maybe a month off. But I've always been able to stay engaged and stay qualified. I don't play everything, but you have the ability to stay engaged by playing once a week. Yep, I'll absolutely agree with you. As someone, uh, myself, being in the program for six years, since I was 18 years old, uh, when I started playing in the PPD program, uh, Shaw just dips his head down there. Um, I was 29. I was 29 years old. <laughs> so uh, as someone that's been a part of the program as well, I, and, I'll, and I'll tell everybody this when they're getting in, w once you find your partner, once you find your local bar on the location tracker on dartstoc.com, uh, all you got to do is sign up, take, take the time to find somebody, say, hey, you and me are playing. You sign up, you go play your first league, and guess what? You play your league, you play uh, monthly trips as well. You're going to qualify for all the major events. You're going to have prize money paid to all levels other than, like you said, special events. And honestly, it's like forcing yourself to go to the batting cages with these leagues because at the end of the day, your averages is what's going to range strong. Let me just tell you one of the leagues I'm in. The current league that I'm in on Thursday night has Gates' his team. It's got J.C. Martinez's team got kenny doyle's team i have a team in the same same token that same league has had jeremiah millar's team at the same time and jules van doggen's league so you tell me how many leagues you can play at your local bar against that level of talent <laughs> exactly i mean you're right i i played in my fair share of no caps i used to be kenny doyle's partner in uh, the no cap leagues there and it's constantly a grind to, to uh play against tougher tougher competition forcing yourself to play better i recently just played with austin braswell in a league uh someone that we just saw in division one uh him and i were going against nick slepic and other great shots as well and it kind of just forces you to grow and you keep playing and you get to play at every level including with those drts and everything and i'm not getting paid to say this this is truly my experience as someone that's played in the program for this long well, it's crazy. So um, I played Rick Hens and Kip Rip, Ken Rip two weeks ago, and um, I, I I posted a four nine average, and I was mad because Rick's five five was just like I had to play at the next level to compete against these guys, and I you know I was pretty happy with the four nine, but I was mad because we got beat. <laughs> four nine's not going to do it. <laughs> You're telling me the truth. I love how Jeremy Burns just posted in the chat. We talking averages? <laughs> no, we don't need to talk averages. We we know what you just posted this weekend. We know what <laughs> your group just threw. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, I don't want. I don't want to. I don't. I couldn't even. I'd have to start carrying dark cases around to keep up with some of those guys. I'll have to get their drinks for them. I'll open the door for them. <laughs> just I can't play against that. Wait, did you say something nice to Austin Braswell while I was gone? See, I leave, and now all the nice things are gone. Well, Austin Roswell was a fantastic league partner. Uh, honestly, and, I, and I've said this, and I'll say this on the record one more time. Austin Braswell, oh, as he says, Maloney just won 9-1, to one, which is uh, a crazy, crazy stat for the top top eight section of the bracket here. Um, but I, Austin Braswell is one of those players that his average jumped up from um, nowhere to a very high average in the same time that I stopped playing around COVID. And so when I play with him in league, I'm like, I still want to show that I know what I'm doing. Nine. There's a big nine right there. I didn't want to cut you off, but wow. It closes, takes the 19s, closes the 20s, closes the 18s, pushing Sugar Chain back on his heels. Sorry, go ahead, Nick. Sorry, no, so. you're good. I'm done complimenting Austin. That's all he gets. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I'm the, I was in the middle of the game. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. <laughs> I was just waiting for you to yell, boom goes a dynamite at the end of that. No, I can't do that. It's not my It's not my catchphrase. I can't use chives. I can't use that. I don't have a catchphrase. That's probably for the best, to be honest with you, because I can tell you that Will doesn't like the chive thing, and um, <laughs> this is no pun intended, but I would burn 
down. Boom goes dynamite if I could. Nah, Just you, you coined it. You even had a sign made for it. <laughs> and all those t-shirts. That's true. Uh, Jersey. Boom goes Wisconsinites. Yep. But Sugar Shane, I do appreciate so much how often he wears that jersey. Not tonight, of course, but often he wears that jersey. He wore it yesterday, that's why. Well, uh, Ram has commanded this this leg. Tell you what, it's it, 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 this final leg is going to be it's going to be eight eight. It will be. Ooh. I I like that idea. I just don't think it's going to be. Jordan Sire. Oh, what is Lappin Assassin saying this time? Said moons over my hammy, nine mark. Moons over my hammy. Uh, I've heard that once or twice. I love that. We call it uh, eggs in a basket is our uh, our version of that, I think. We and call it the, darts. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, the, so the normal name. Correct. It's the only thing Fair normal shame. in Florida. Starting on the 19s. He's not confident on the 20. That's why he went there. Or he's making Ram push because Ram lit that 19 up, up that last leg. And Ram started 19s last leg, too. They're both doing it now. I think they're uh, kind of both goading each other into different styles of play. I mean, we've seen it with some of these like random shots at some other numbers to get the second numbers. You see the other guy chasing it. It's kidding, keeping everybody on their toes. It also could be tired arms, too. It's easier to throw the 19 than it is to go up on the top of the board for us short folks. And those 9-gram darts have to flow, in my opinion. You know, I, I still can't believe it to this day. As someone that throws a 20-gram fully dressed set to throw a 9-gram barrel weight. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Mm -mm. Nope. I'd throw my shoulder out. Well, it's kind of like when you play with your steel tip set and they're 24 grams and then you go to your 18 gram set and you're like, Oh gosh, this, I have to throw the start harder. Now just imagine that times two. And that is uh, how hard you have to throw that dart for Graham or for Ram. I, I, I am right. Yep. You keep doing it. It's, it's tired speak. And I see, I see the Ram and the G and I just combine them both every time. It's also, though, another pointing case of him throwing those nine gram darts, right? Where any style of throw, any style of darts, any style of setup, as long as you're consistent at throwing it, that's going to be the big difference maker. What happens if there's wind in the bar or wind in the tournament? Does it really bother him on that nine gram dart? Then it's not a good design tournament hall. Because <laughs> I did think we had a little bit of a wind action there to the last one. Yeah. Yesterday, they, when they got down to like the final four or something, that's when they finally paid attention to it. Um, but I think they had just turned on the air inside the venue, and then they turned it off. Um, apparently, it was the heat that they turned off because everyone was so excited to come to the closet where Will and I were after the match was over. And was like, oh, here's where the heat is. Oh, my God. Just start calling him nine gram. Instead of Ram. Nine gram it is. Better get a jersey made. Nine gram Gravera. Nine gram Franny. What else do we got? We we keep naming players. Oh, you're definitely right that it's not that hard. It's definitely in my head. Gary Bloom loses, uses a 9.5 gram dart. Oh. So Skittles. Speaking of momentum, if you look at the uh, Sugar Shane uh, crashing of the boards, he's got a sizable lead, got a lot of segments open, and pushing Ram into trying to grab another extra segment to try to push back. A little bit of a sugar rush, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. So we've got a nine gram and sugar rush. Definitely tired, Sean. I'm not even the one coming up with these. Paul. Yeah, I was hoping that uh, no one was going to say that. Connor Olson. How about this in the chat saying, how is Booyah Cup? Buddy was awesome. Um, Would have been cool to see you there. 
I know you're over in Janesville area. But um, Connor's a fantastic youth player, to say the I least. I don't know if I like Sugar Shot there. He opted to go for points on his third dart instead of staying for the close. Um, Ram has the point lead and still has the number open where he can point for more. Kind of just left him an opportunity to do some damage. You saw he went for the white horse there on dart one and not going to do as much damage as you probably thought. But it's still that that trip 17 there wouldn't have been possible if uh, Sugar just stayed and hit a single 17 on his third dart there. And now he's giving Ram another go at the white horse. He's now getting two attempts instead of the one he would have gotten. Uh, Sugar's ch challenging Ram to throw it. Ram should go to the bowl. He does. Goes double, double bowl there. Habanero Joe saying, what's the match score? Well, welcome to the CSC Challenger Series. You can actually find it right at the top of your screen there. It's going to be six uh, for Sugar Shane and seven for nine gram. <laughs> He's not going to live it down. He's going to let you have it. No. I, I can't be. No, we can't name these Texans because they'll fight me. They'll beat us up. <laughs> it's okay. We'll just have to like make them a jersey or something to make up for it. Who knows? They'll still, be, they'll still beat us up. Well, we'll see. There you go. There's the point lead back. Otherwise, Ram was going to have winning darts in his hand. So, Ram, back to the bowl as you go, buddy. Double bowl. Slip the 19. Double bowl. Agreed. Well... You guys just make it easy, huh? You just call it out, and it just happens. And a two mark, all... two mark, two mark turn here, and uh, Ram takes the game. Ricky Bobby calling out. Oh, look! Oh, not a two mark, huh? How about them apples, Ryan? Wrong again. No, I was no, close. Kidding. Trip eighteen, trip sixteen, game shot. Oh, we went double bowl. It's gonna keep it going. Now nope. go for the win. Wow. Hey. Did I not call the win? Nine gram Ram. And they are pumped up there. 5.0. That's, that's what that bar just screamed. Well, it's because now it makes it an eight to six lead. Sugar Shane will have to break the throat of, uh, of Ram Gravera here in this leg. Even to have a shot. Well, in the next leg. He gets, he gets to throw this one. Well, don't forget A to Z Darts is celebrating Women's History Month by featuring female signature products on a dedicated landing page called Women in Darts. They're featuring some of their own sponsored players like Callie West, Robin Curry, Maria O'Brien, and Tori Quish, alongside with some of the biggest names in darts worldwide. Just click the banner on their homepage over at a-zdarts.com. You can also take advantage of the Dart of the Month featuring the Shots uh, Kelt uh, Sinermos, I butchered that, and the recent Shot Darts launch. Just click the banners on their homepage over at a-zdarts.com. Beautiful. Except for when you said I butchered that. Just let well, it go. I, it's You know, I, I, get, I, get, a little, I get a little nervous. You just got to Elsa that thing. Let it go. Let it go. Don't hold it back anymore. Exactly. Well, look at this. Um, we're getting we're getting some stuff going on here in the chat. We don't need to fight everybody. There were two great tournaments this weekend. The Oklahoma show Throwdown was a fantastic. Really ran and and done event with some great talented players. Booyah Cup had some great talented players. And the CSC has some great talented players, like Ram Rivera who is throwing fire right now. I was going to say, Ram has got the momentum, and he is smoking red hot now. Well, Sugar Shane not going to go away without a fight, that's for sure. But we might see this one slipping towards a conclusion with a big nine mark there from Ram Gravera at the end. Boom goes the Texan. Now you got to call that one. Look at that crowd get up, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah, hey, big nine mark. Well, Sugar just going to fall short here at the end of the evening. 
And Rams going to take this down nine to six, and barring anything crazy happening. There it is, Ram Guevara, your winner of Division One of the CSC Challenge Series tonight. He will move forward in the loser side of the bracket, where he gets the distinct pleasure of playing Texan Johnny Lackey on the loser side for ninth through twelfth place, and he has officially guaranteed his money back with that victory. So, will those two play in the same house together? I. I know that Ram plays out of the stadium, and I know that, for the most part, Johnny plays out of Thirsties. But I know that they're both in the Houston area, so you never know. But that's going to be a They could one. make the trek. Uh, so you see some of those players try to do so. Uh, but although it is a little bit of a hike, Texas is a lot bigger than a lot of people realize. So if they both decide to play remotely, they can obviously do that as well. Well, they're both in the Houston, Texas area, at least. At least they're both kind of in the same city, kind of. Now, they could be on reverse sides of that. Indianapolis, I am 50 minutes away from my studio uh, where we do the siege every week. So I make that trip down around the circle. Um, it's about as far away as we can get still being in, in Indianapolis. So, okay. Do you guys – wait, do you guys hear that? In the background, I'm, I'm starting to hear faint chanting of Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. Because next week, Brandon Neal is taking on Brett Holliday. Well, this is why we can't have nice things, guys. It was a good, it was a good run tonight. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I tried. Tried to add a Nick, little flavor, a little fun. This well, that fla- whatever. Hey, listen. They're about an hour apart, so there you go. It's a little bit further away than, than we thought. But how about that? Brett Hollanday. Uh, I had the distinct pleasure of seeing that up close and personal on Friday night in the blind draw of the Booyah Cup. Um, he didn't throw his best against us, I'm going to be honest with you. But he's averaging over a five in Division II. Um, Brandon Neal's going to have to bring his A game on Wednesday, that is for sure. It's going to be a tough matchup. Ryan, what did you think of uh, your first experience on the CSC here as far as from being in the booth? Well, it was actually good to get back in the booth. I uh, haven't been since Las Vegas Open. Um, I know that there's some stuff coming up with the PPD that I'm going to be in, uh, announcing. So I'm, I'm excited with that. Um, you know, the, the there's things coming up for USA Darts Productions that I won't be at, which it's okay, but I've got some stuff later on planned. But this was pretty cool to get back in there again. I got to see Pete Cat. We got to see, you know, Ram. We got to see Sugar play. I mean, it's they're good players. That they, they give them another week, two weeks later, and that same match could be Sugar Shane's. I mean, we I knew that going into this what it was going to be. It was going to be tight. That is two zero for Ram against Sugar. So he's going to remember this. He's going to remember it. It's a good match. I mean, how about that? Sugar Shane was one of our probably top five favorites coming to the CSC Challenge Series. Out. He gone. Of the CSC Challenge the Series. Do. Especially this. Division one of the CSC Challenge Series. So Ram Gravera moves on. Great matchup from him. Uh, he goes on to play Johnny Lackey. We got Rick Henze taking on Kevin Schmitz uh, right now. Steve Hennings taking on Brett Davis. The winner of that will take on John Edwards. The winner of the Rick Henze Kevin Schmitz match takes on Kenny Doyle. Oh, my. Um, we have Ram taking on Johnny Lackey. And then at the top of the bracket, Sean Kaflish, who is a Wisconsinite, is taking on Mike Scarborough. The winner takes on another Wisconsinite, Bob Anderson. So that is how it's flowing on the left side. Mike Maloney is sitting in the king seat match where he will take on the winner of Mike Carter and Leonard Gates. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Crazy stuff when you say... Gets better and better, buddy. I'm telling you. Well, I think that'll do it for us here tonight, the CSC Challenger Series. Hey, thanks for letting me come on at last minute. I'm I'm uh, always here to fill in. Of course, it's I, I can't take the role of the wizard Will Stewart. No, it's yours now. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think that was. Fan <laughs> vote uh, is clearly in Ryan's favor. Oh, I don't. I'm not popular like that, man. No way. 
Nobody can work a dark room the way Will Stewart can. Well, it's Um, been an absolute pleasure to have you join the booth with us. I mean, I know we had a lot of good time. I got a chance to banter with you. I was looking forward to that uh, after hearing you for so long. So it's been an absolute pleasure. And thanks for joining our team for tonight. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, the one thing that I have noticed for, like, Sean and for you, Nick, is our streams are getting us are, are getting momentum you guys had two thousand viewers on sunday two thousand yeah That's it was cool. well it's it's easy when you have the players that we have right mm-hmm. when the best of the best uh come on and play in front of us and it's just our voices uh that we're utilizing there it's it's easy Last yesterday was easy. It was easy to get over 2K, and it's because you have Danny Baggish at the top of his game going up against Leonard Gates at the top of his game. And well, who doesn't want to see that? Value. But look at the production value. I sat there and watched on YouTube because I knew Facebook was struggling. But I yeah. sat there and watched on YouTube, and I got up at a break to go get to get my popcorn. I ran to the bathroom. I didn't want to miss a dart. You guys' commentary was all spot on. The production was spot on. Holy cow! And I get to be on tonight. Oh, it, it's just. It's it's great. It's great for darts. It's great for darts to see this production at the Booyah Cup tonight, Wednesday night, this weekend. I mean, the fans are getting more. We're just growing exponentially. It's incredible. It's incredible to be a part of. Well, we we appreciate the kind words, and we are happy to have you a part of the a, a part of the production. And we're happy with anyone who decides to live stream darts and and promote this game that we love so much. That's the whole goal. And I think uh, it was round of nine that. Uh, did the, yep. the uh, Oklahoma throwdown and they did pretty, they did a good job. They did a good job. Yeah. I mean, it, it went well and we're going to see more and more pop up and we're excited for it because it's only going to get better and better here uh, in darts in North America. And we're happy to be a very small part of that growth, but um, that's going to do it for us here on the CSC Town series division one, Ryan Mooneyham joined us a special guest host tonight. Appreciate you, buddy. Nick Deshera, Sean Green, Will Stewart somewhere, probably sleeping. Uh, but he he might be back on Wednesday. We might just fire him. It's been two shows in a row. He can't even show up for. Pfft. Ridiculous. Even Bryson showed up tonight. I know. And Pete. Even, yeah, let's see, even the cat showed up. <laughs> Pete was better. <laughs> well, thank you so much, everybody, for your support. As always, don't go too far away because we'll be back on Wednesday for another round of CSE Challenger Series. I'm Nick Deshera, joined by Ryan Mooneyham and Sean Green, Pete the Cats, and everyone else that uh, tuned in tonight. Thank you so much, and we'll be seeing you soon. Have a great night, guys.